Tubers, here we are back again after a full day of visiting boutique to boutique. Today we took a stroll down Rodeo in Beverly Hills and we stopped by a couple watch shops. Um, we stopped by Cartier, we stopped by the um, Breitling store, we also stopped by IWC, we stopped by uh, Panerai, we stopped by a couple, a couple, of, a couple of different places. The um, main reason why we were there was I was in the market for a Cartier Santos or a Breitling Navitimer, the B01. Um, we ended up with a Cartier. I even put up a video a couple of days ago in regards to um, in regards to which one I should be going with. I got some mixed review, mixed answers, and didn't really get a. Uh, I think I, there was only one person who actually said Santos all day. But thank you for that. Um, but uh, however, my birthday is coming up this month, and um, my wife decided to gift me with a watch, and I'm sincerely grateful. Um, in all honesty, I wanted the Breitling just because I've always wanted a Breitling. It's been my watch that it's been, well, not just the Breitling. I already have a Breitling, but I've always wanted the Navitimer in specific. Um, and I went to go check it out because all the colors they had, they brought out these crazy new colors that were um that we've never really seen in the watch world and um when i actually looked at it in person they look just like they do on the internet however when you put it on there was something there's something a bit missing um it was a tad different from their classic brightling style I want to say um, it was a little it was a little off like the colors were a little off like the green the the, the mint um, it was a little off maybe it was a sunburst style um, because it was playing with the light too much and you started getting so many different variations um, there was one watch there was one movement there was one piece that I really liked which was their limited edition limited to 50 pieces and um, it was only available basically at the Beverly Hills Boutique. They had about, um, they had three pieces there. Um, we were looking at the number 22. It was a, it had a, um, what do you call it? Um, Mother of Pearl. It was kind of a dark blue, um, gray, dark blue, almost slate-like. Uh, beautiful piece. Um, I immediately fell in love with it. Um, it was probably the best piece they had the best iteration they've had about with the new um, Navitimer. However, um, the price was up there. It was over ten thousand. It was about. It was almost twelve twelve thousand dollars. And um, after that, we walked over to Cartier. And when we saw when we put this put this guy on the wrist, um, it just really fit. Um, it fit very nicely, and it was it was very handsome. Um, it was masculine, it was sporty, um, it fit really well, and um, we decided to go with the cardigan. First off, the box. Um, who cares about the box, right? Well, I do care a little bit because it is the presentation um, and it's the whole experience, right? So the outer box is it's it's okay it's decent it's nothing right home about or it's not so bad that it just um disgusts you or anything they're just uh paper boxes however when you get to the watch box it's it's not wood it's encased in like this um it has a spring action. The hinges are, I'm, I guess it's just a spring-loaded piano hinge all the way across. Um, 
there is a button on here, a locking mechanism. A lot of people I hear do complain about this box just kind of sticking and not really wanting to open. But here's the watch. We picked up WWSSA0030 in the blue dial. Um, comes with a little protective cover. I have seen better. It is a polycarbonate cover. Um, it's, it's, I guess it does the job. Now, this is the watch. Just gonna go through all the little markings in detail and somewhat a macro light, macro lighting. Um, the finish more than likely is not the best I've seen. You can see the edges of the hands where it rolls off. You can see bits of light play, which means that it's not it's not super smooth. That might even be a dust particle inside them, inside, right, right by the center there. Yeah, that, well, no, that's a uh, reflection. This thing is a scratch magnet. It's, it's, Oh God. Okay. So I have seen some somebody do a macro on the on the, on the hands and everything, and it's not as crisp as you'd expect it to be. Mm, the sunburst is it's okay. It's not the best I've seen either. Mm. However. You can't see any of this stuff with the naked eye. It's one of those things where you really need a, you really need a macro lens to be able to decipher these things, and it could be acceptable. So that's the watch. Comes with this little pillow, which is okay. It, I do like it a little bit better than this if you intend to keep it in this watch case um, If this is your one and only watch you might opt to put it in this case and keep it in this case um, I have a dedicated watch box where I put all my watches into so this just goes in, into storage Comes with a little warranty card I did open this earlier today and I did remove three links um, one thing about these links, um, they they call them smart links, but um, you see that one right there. I don't know what it is with this particular link. Ooh, look at that! I guess it's time to cut my nails again. But this one was a little problematic. It would not stay in. You see, you push it in. And you hear a click and or you feel a click but when you move it it pops oops sorry went out of frame again god my hands look horrible <laughs> never mind what my hands look like okay folks leave me alone i don't go to a pedicure or a nail salon and i'm a dude all right so they give you this little pusher. It's got a rounded tip on it, so it helps you kind of... Okay, so it's in, right? And then you play with it. Oh, went out of frame again, my, my apologies. Um, it kind of links out. 
And the cool thing about these guys is these little tabs seemingly melt away when you when they are in position. It's you can hardly see them. And just like that, it's out. And you can't pull this out all the way. It sticks, it stays right there. Um, so you can't lose, you can't lose one, which is pretty cool. Um, you can use your nail to pop them open. Sometimes they'll stop right there and you have to pull it out like so, in which case you can detach the link. Now these links, What's cool about these links is not only that, but it's the size. They're not very big. So it's quite easy to get the bracelet sized correctly to your wrist. So usually you'll find anywhere from about six to seven links in other watches here on, on either side of the bracelet, on either side of the watch. Um, this particular bracelet, you get about, you get 11 links in total. Um, right now, after removing these three links, I have one, two, three, four, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine links, and 10 links on this end. So it's nine and 10 links, so that means these are spaced apart much closer together, which means you can really fine tune your fit. And um, because it's a butterfly clasp, it's really important to be able to do that. If these links are much wider, you know, if they're spaced apart much wider, for example, the, for example, the, um, the Omega, planet, not the planet, well, the planet ocean too, but it's a, it's a fold over clasp, but the um, Aquaterra, um, they have like, six links, six to five links, or six to seven links, and it's difficult to have it sized to your wrist perfectly. Um, you might be somewhere in the middle, or then you, you're, it's either gonna be just a tad loose or just a tad tight. Um, this one, however, it does fit over your wrist very nicely, and you can get it fine-tuned very easily because of the shorter links. Now, in this box, you get a tool, and it also comes with, which I thought was a really cool touch, um, it comes with two calfskin blue ones, as a matter of fact, and they're not just buckle and strap system, but rather a clasp. You get the Cartier clasp, along with two leather straps and they are easy change straps, which I'll go over. Um, the blue calfskin, um, I didn't really care for them. They're flat, they don't have too much, they don't have a bulge in the middle or anything. It's just, um, they're a little boring. And the color, um, the blue color wasn't really rich. It's, um, it's a little bland and I opted to order a alligator skin and lucky enough they actually had one in stock which is unheard of um, so if you look at the two colors you can see how much more brighter the blue cow blue alligator skin is and it's a much better complement to the watch I believe now if you if I put it up right next to each other you can see how the dial color matches up to the alligator much better than it does the calfskin. The calfskin is a little dull, whereas the alligator is on the is a, is a bit more bright and it's a much nicer complement. Um, so we did get that Ex extra. We I did actually pay for this in addition to the watch, um, but at least I had a deployment buckle, which I usually enjoy over. The conventional buckle and strap. Um, this was a quite nice of a touch. I really liked the fact that it's a deployment buckle um, and it's a two pusher here. You push those two there and it opens up like so. 
the deployment buckle on the on, on the leather strap there it's not as substantial um the links i mean the the whole thing is not very substantial however it is a nice and elegant touch now we'll go over that next in a little bit and we go back to the watch butterfly clasp two button the butterfly clasp is much more stout and much more substantial than the fold over clasp of the leather band. As you can see here. Everybody knows that the Santos is got a bunch of history behind it. Um, supposedly the, the watch is supposed to be the f first men's wrist watch. Um, the watch, did I buy it for the history? Um, no. <laughs> um, Mr. Santos Dumont required a watch where he was when he was uh, flying his blimp around the Eiffel Tower or whatever over a hundred years ago, and he needed a watch because he needed both hands to steer his blimp. Is what my understanding is. Um, I never really knew that until some time ago when I was start when I actually started looking into the Santos and became more and more interested in the Santos. Um, Anyway, you can find a bunch of information on the, line, on, on, the, on the net in regards to the history of this watch. Now, what I'm going to mainly focus on is fit and finish and how I like the watch, how I feel about the watch. Um, for 7,000 and change, well, tax included, you're talking about eight. Um, they could have stuck a jewel, a real sapphire there. I mean, it's just... This is just, it's artificial. It's synthetic sapphire, basically glass. Um, we do get, at least we do get a um, sapphire crystal in the front. And um, the industrialized design of the watch, I do like it a lot. Um, the screw downs, the screws, which really have no purpose there, but to be, but to look pretty, I do like it. I'm more of a form over function um, or form follow function, I'm sorry, uh, kind of person. Um, but it is what it is. It is a design cue that, that does set this watch apart. Now, the Santos Dumont used to have a squared off bezel all the way around. Um, Santos de Cartier has now extended that bezel, kind of like an Iron Man face. <laughs> and then what they've also done is they've tapered it down and met it up right up against here. So it doesn't stand proud anymore. It actually stands to kind of flow right into the, right into the bracelet. Um, I really do like this design a little bit better than the Santos Dumont just because um it's a little more flowing um the whole the whole watch itself it has a more flowing design um it's a little more it was it used to be a little more blocky i thought in my opinion uh and i do enjoy this quite a bit more uh the bracelet there you, you can't say enough about this bracelet this bracelet is fantastic um it's and it's the shape is excellent um it feels great um the edges you don't have any sharp edges or well, you know, you do have a little bit of sharp edges um you see right here you see how the shape concaves this way and when you run your fingers across the concave side you do feel you do feel something catch right there and right there and right there so every link you feel it right going around going across this way um it could have been they could have just 
ground down the edges just a tad there just to make it feel a little smoother um, but you do feel some scalloping as you run across run your fingers down this side um, now when you get the watch it actually comes this side that way that way this side that way so it used to, it's flipped but um, when I put my watch on I put my watch on like this and then I fold this over and then I fold this over second um, so I've actually reversed the direction of my my bracelet to accommodate for that um, it's just the way I put my watches on and it feels better this way uh, it feels easier this way and this is the large size this is a 39 point um, what was it 39.8 39.7 inch width on the case um, which means basically it's basically it's a 40 millimeter watch um, so considering that it's a 40 millimeter watch um, if it was round it would be 40 millimeters this way diagonal but it's not it's actually a lot larger so it may look a little bigger just because there's more real estate but when you actually put it on it wears more I think it wears more like a more like a more like a 39 or a 40 it doesn't wear it doesn't wear super big um, I know that a lot of people think well yeah you know the it, it takes takes away from the elegance of the watch uh, the original design but I don't think so I think it's just as elegant as as it is now when it comes to the thickness of this watch this is where the watch excels I mean this is where the watch it's it's it's, it's exemplary um, it's it's 9.38 millimeters it's under a centimeter it's and not only that it's not flat it's it has a contour to it so it wraps around your wrist like there's like it's nothing I mean it doesn't care it's there's like it wraps around your wrist so well that there's like no gaps there's no there's no gaps it's it's like it, it's amazing how that feels you know there's nothing sitting proud it, it wraps literally right around the wrist there's like no gaps just a tiny little one right there I mean it feels so good and and maybe it's because of that there's it it's and, and look how look how look how perfect this fit is it's not too loose it's not too tight it's perfect one of the advantages of this watch to had over the Breitling was that is that it's a hundred meters of water resistance um, a hundred meters of water resistance is it's not perfect um, in my book I think the 150 mark is the actual perfect perfect um, 150 mark is actually the perfect um, water uh, water water resistance depth but I would gladly live with a hundred over 30 the Breitling has a 30 millimeter a 30 30 meter water resistance which means that it's basically not water resistant <laughs> you know I mean 30 meters you can't you can't even I'd be afraid to I, I'd, I'd be afraid to wash my hands in it um, you know it's just one of those things I mean you want the watch to be functional um, you know 30 meter water resistance is is a joke really um, now some technical aspects of this watch is the you know Cartier doesn't specify this on their website or anything anywhere else but um, the rumors have it that this watch is magnetic resistance anti-magnetism and magnetic resist resistance is around um, 12,000 gauss so they have they were testing the watch or whatever and they um, it's you know they're they're quote unquote the watch is resisting to twelve did I say thousand no twelve hundred 
Gauss. Um, that's quite astounding. It's 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 I believe that's Mill Gauss territory, if I'm not mistaken. Um, here, this is an in-house caliber. I believe the older um, Dumont use. I believe it was a DeMont. They used to use a JLC complication, um, but right now, I believe, once they've done, they, they, they did make an in-house movement of the 1847MC. Um, the rotor is bi-directional. Um, you know, Cartier doesn't give any information about this stuff out on their website. I have no idea why. They just want you to buy the watch because it's a Cartier, I think. Um, yeah, but just in case you're not aware, this is a bi-directional um, rotating um, rotor. So that's a good thing. Um, the Cartier steel is, it, it is completely, it's, it's a really good steel um, sourced ethically. It's a 316 um, L. Now, this steel is a very good steel, and um, it does use it, it. It is it is used most wide often, quite wide, most widespread use of the steel in watches. Quite you know, it's it's everywhere basically. However, what they do differently is in their two tone. In their two-tone watches, so the ones with the gold, um, two-tone watches or higher, or I guess it can't be really higher, but um, because otherwise it'd be a all gold watch and it wouldn't include any stainless steel. But um, in their in their two-tone watches, you actually get three one six LVM steel. The three one six LVM steel is um, surgical or no, not surgical. It's implant grade stainless steel. So you can literally have that steel inside your body and your body doesn't reject it. So that's that's another that's that's astounding. That's that's unbelievable um that they would go as far as to use a steel an implant grade steel on their watches when nobody else nobody would actually know. However, they could they do go to that extra step on their most more expensive line of watches, which was, which is, which was quite nice to read about. Um, from, I mean, that's, that's quite astounding if you ask me. Um, so the watch, I like big watches. I don't like small dainty watches. Um, even regular 40 millimeters or 41 millimeters, um, to me, they're small watches. Um, I like a hefty watch. Um, 41 millimeters or 40 millimeters is absolutely the smallest watch that I will wear. Now, when I was younger, when big watches weren't really a thing, they didn't make them in that size. The biggest watch you can find was like a 36 or 38, if, if you were on the large side. But nowadays, um, 41 to 43 millimeter is quite the norm. For me, 40, 42, 43, 44, if I was getting the Breitling Navitimer, I would go, I would get it in the 46. Um, not that I have a terribly large wrist because it's a tad under seven inches, but mm, I'm six feet tall, um, knocking on 200 pounds. So, a small watch just doesn't do it for me. And this one, I don't know if you think that's too big on me or not, or whether it looks, it's lost this elegance or not, but I don't care because I'd rather wear a masculine watch than an elegant watch. Um, so the size fits me quite well. It's pleasing to my eye. And I don't like looking at small dials anyway. Um, it does come with a date. Um, the crown is a little on the loose side, I want to say. Um, the crown is, it, it, it turns really easily. I, 
I don't know, maybe that's just the way they are. But that doesn't bother me too much because not like you're doing too much, too many things with the crown anyway. Um, here the polished bezel is going to be a problem. So I've found, I've sourced a company that um, actually makes skins, um, you know, those um, self-repairing skins that you, you know, wet, you, you wet apply. And um, I actually ordered it, it was quite expensive. Um, but I did order it just because I did not want to deal with the scratches. Um, it's okay you get some scratches there because I'll just polish it myself and get it back. But um, the fact of the matter is this watch has so many nooks and crannies inside here with all the screws. All the polish will probably end up getting inside there and then after that I'd have to wash it all out and that can become quite the chore. So I've opted to try the skin um, application and the one one cool thing is that the skin it doesn't only protect the bezel but it protects every single link even the sides of the link um, and the body itself it's basically like a full armor you know back in the days when you used to when we used to cover up cover up our cell phones with it um, it's basically kind of like that but for this watch it even covers up the the case back um, and everything in between so um, it was like hundred and fifty dollars and I don't know if it's money well spent spent or not but um well you do get you do get you do get three sh three sheets of it so you can if you mess up or if it's worn you can peel it off and use your second six second set and then the third set so I am looking forward to that. I probably will not be wearing this watch until I have some type of protection, at least around the bezel. Um, just because, you know, even after I brought it home, I noticed there was a small scratch right across the top here. And I actually did take a little polish and polished it out. Now it's gone. Let me see, actually, I haven't checked really well. It was right across the top there. Yeah, it looks like I got it. It was a, it was a round, it was a rounded, kind of an art hairline scratch, right across the top of the bezel there, at the twelve o'clock between the one and the eleven o'clock. So, with that said, um, I've shown you how easy it is to take out the links. Now let me show you how easy it is to take out the bracelet. was it this one goes on the top side yes I always forget which side it goes in so there's a I didn't see it. there's a little button here and it pushes that tab in and once that tab goes in you can insert it and it locks into place. There's a little groove right there where that little tab actually fits into. Okay, and then just a matter of threading it through here. I forget which I which hole I had it in. I think it might be this one here. Easy as pie. And there's that guy. The leather strap feels pretty good. Um, here there is a little bit of space, but that's because there's the 
it's not really broken in yet. And I think I've got it on one the one hole too close to the edge here. Yeah, I think that's the that's the correct one. Yeah, that feels better. Yeah. So that's the leather version on the blue alligator. I think the alligator really does it justice. Um it is if you, it's it's a completely different feel of the watch. It makes the watch feel I mean, it makes it feel a little more formal. Um not as sporty obviously but it still feels i mean it's 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 gator um makes it look a little more elegant um i think in my opinion um i think it looks cool i think it really looks good and the blue on blue just you know it, it kind of sets it off and the stitching is slightly lighter than the blue um alligator Let me zoom this in for you guys just a little bit there. Have a better look. I think it looks sexy. Yes. So, um, there it is. That's my two cents. Um, give it a like if you like. If you know, if you got any questions, I'll try. I'll try my best to answer them. Um, you know, subscribe if you haven't already. I can really use it. I'm trying to. I am trying to um, grow the channel a little bit. Um, we've just really started doing this, but you know, I review not just watches, but I review kind of random things in my life that I feel that's important to me and I just put them up there you know um, there's a lot of stuff I talk about a lot of different kind of stuff that you might be interested in if you're anything like me or somebody who just wants to know a lot of stuff so um, yeah subscribe to the channel and give me shoot me a question if you like um, and uh, if I don't know the answer I'll research it and get you an answer you know what I mean Toodaloo.